So thanks, everybody, again, for joining. Um, a little housekeeping for those of you who haven't joined our webinars before. You can, of course, log in online and see the slides and hear the audio through your computer. Um, sometimes the audio is better if you call in through the conference line, um, which is 1-866-740-1260. Um, and then, of course, the access code 4438313. Um, in addition, um, I usually mute most of the folks' phones because we always end up getting so much feedback and it's hard to hear. Um, but um, I also like to have this as an option. So, of course, you can mute your own phone if we do have it open during the chat at the end and you need to mute it um, using star 6, or you can also unmute if you need to using star 7. So for those of you who don't know us, um, I wanted to introduce myself. My name is Jen Ewell. I'm the director of the Women's Foundation of Montana. Um, and uh, I've been with the Women's Foundation for about six years now. Um, the Women's Foundation is all about economic independence for Montana women and a brighter future for Montana girls. Um, and we are primarily known for our grant making across the state. So. Um, we have given out nearly $800,000 in five to $10,000 grants to nonprofits across the state that serve women and girls now. Uh, but in addition to our grant making, um, we also do a lot of research. So we publish research on the economic status of women in Montana, and that research is really um, used by both our nonprofit partners and also um, used uh, in some of our policy work that we do in the state. Um, and it's really just information that is um, generally used to kind of shape the conversation about women in Montana. Um, and in addition to those things, we also have an initiative that's pretty new that's called Powerhouse Montana. And I'm really happy today to be able to introduce Maggie Sullivan, who is um, our new program assistant at the Women's Foundation of Montana. And she's really in charge of Powerhouse. Hello, everybody. So happy to have you all here. Um, as Jen said, I'm, my kind of uh, main frame inside the Women's Foundation is Powerhouse Montana, which you might have seen through our Facebook pages or social media, such as Instagram. We've really been working on creating uh, and providing a space for networking, for leadership, for connections of all sorts, educational opportunities, all sorts of things. A powerhouse is basically geared to attract women from all over the state, to have them meet in within their communities, within other communities, to reach out, to share what they know, to learn new things, and ultimately just make a stronger connection to build in our future, in within our goal of the Women's Foundation of creating a brighter future for everybody. Yeah, and we're going to talk more about Powerhouse later. So today we're excited to welcome some um, amazing speakers. Um, but before we do that, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, women in history. So. Um, as you may know, um, this is Women's History Month. I'm sorry, my slides keep doing something crazy. This is Women's History Month, and um, we uh, are big in talking some about sort of history, both in Montana and across the U.S. Um, at the Women's Foundation. Um, you, of course, I'm sure know that we've made great progress in the last few years um, towards, especially in education. For women, um, but also in the realm of leadership and advancing income, which is the focus of the Women's Foundation. Um, but of course, the fact remains that women fall behind in all of these areas, and particularly um, in the number of women who serve in leadership positions. And Montana is known as a state in which we've had some great women leaders. Um, we all know the great. Uh, Jeanette Williams, pictured here, first woman in U.S. Congress, unfortunately also our only Montana woman U.S. Congressperson to date. Um, we were also one of the very first states to pass an equal pay law in 1919. We can be proud of that. Um, but there are other areas in which we have a lot of work to do, of course. We know we've only had one woman serve as governor in the state. Um, we currently have 28% of our legislature, which is women, which is pretty high. Um, we're usually in about the top 10 here, but of course we realize that um, we'd be better served if we were getting closer to 50%. 
Um, and I'm really proud to say that in the past few years, the number of women who own businesses has increased exponentially. So we're at 31.5% um, women business owners at this point, which is really exciting. And you're going to hear from some of the people who have really promoted some of these advancements today. Here are some of the women leaders who have joined us. Um, I'm going to um, just briefly um, welcome them, and then I'm going to let them talk more about um, their work and what they're up to. So this is Susie. Susie Bridget White is in Bozeman. Um, she is a rock star and is all about promoting women entrepreneurs and business owners. Welcome, Susie. Thank you. Hello, yes. everyone. Kim Dudick um, is one of our own Montana legislators and um, has really been an amazing proponent of um, both uh, laws that assist women and children in the state and has gotten a lot of great work done for us. And we're really excited to have Kim here to talk about the new leadership um, program that she has helped to found. Welcome, Kim. Are you there, Kim? Thank you. I am, yes, thank you. Yay, okay. And Brenda is also joining us, and she's from Great Falls, um, is a business leader in her own right with the Wendt Agency, and is one of the founders of Women Leading Montana, which is an exciting new initiative. Welcome, Brenda. Are you there, Brenda? Okay, it's possible that I might need to unmute her phone. Let me work on that. In the meantime, um, Haley Venata has also joined us, and Haley's in Billings. Um, Haley is also a business owner in her own right, um, and uh, is the former publisher of a women's magazine there, um, and now in uh, business as well, doing um, some real estate, I believe, and she has started an amazing new initiative called 100 Strong, which is all about women's philanthropy. Welcome, Haley. Thank you. Yes. Okay. So these are just a few of, I have to say, a plethora of new um, initiatives across the state that have kind of sprung up in the last year. Um, and it's really interesting because I feel like for years the Women's Foundation was trying to figure out where we could really fund and promote women's leadership initiatives, and suddenly um, they're everywhere. So I'm really excited to be able to just shine a light on a few of those. Um, and I'm going to let the women themselves talk about their work. Um, Susie, we're going to start with you. Um, and I'd love it if you could just share a little bit about the work you do um, at the Montana Women's Business Center and maybe tell us something about what kind of inspired you um, to start into this work. Sure, of course. So um, we are based out of Bozeman, Montana, obviously, but we are a statewide organization helping, we, helping women throughout the entire state start and grow businesses. And so um, we have a sub-center over in Hamilton, Montana, but, um, but I have clients through every um, corner of the state. And so we help people start businesses through one-on-one um, -on -one business counseling that is no cost. Um, thanks to folks like the Women's Foundation, um, they help support our organization so that we can keep it no cost. Um, and then we also have low-cost business trainings, and then we offer more than 800 online classes that start at $100. Um, so we really try to keep everything affordable and um, accessible for women, and I offer scholarships, obviously, for anyone that needs it. Um, on top of that, we do a lot of mentoring and a lot of matchmaking with mentoring. And then, um, again, we just try to connect women to women. So really, um, we have a really strong referral network um, to help women grow their businesses. And so how I got into this was, um, you know, about 10 years ago, um, my husband owned a gutter business, a rain gutter business. And the business was getting so large, and if any of you are from Bozeman, you may have been involved with the hailstorms that we had about 10 years ago. And our business was just going off. It was insane. Um, we were hiring, trying to hire people, try to grow the company. And at the time, I had a full-time job. I'm, I'm a fundraising professional, and I've always been in nonprofit management. And so I was balancing a nonprofit full-time job as well as trying to run the books, the marketing, um, do all the bookkeeping, things like that for our gutter business. And um, 
what happened is that, um, you know, we just kept growing and growing. And I remember going to the bank and we got denied our loan. We weren't keeping up with our bookkeeping. We were kind of slacking in some areas. Um, as an entrepreneur, you are overwhelmed by wearing many hats. And I remember that day thinking, oh, my God, I can't believe we were turned down from a loan. I just remember sitting in that bank. And um, from that moment forward, I said, I need to educate myself and become a better entrepreneur and a better business owner. And so I did that um, on top of my full-time job, just like so many other women in this state where we're trying to just juggle our family, our kids, being a being a mother, a daughter, a friend, a sister, a partner, um, trying to do all those things, but I needed to educate myself. And so um, I continued to run our business, and then I successfully sold our gunner business, and we launched a sculpture business that we run right now. Um, but from there, an opportunity came for me to run the Montana Women's Business Center, and I felt like I was the right person because I had been in their shoes before. I've been that person trying to do so many things, um, trying to – market your business, trying to be in all those networking groups. I've tried to hire and fire and write job descriptions. I've done it all. Um, tried to find investors, things like that for our business. And so I felt like I was the right person for this job. And so that's really what got me motivated to be in the role that I'm in now. And I'm hoping that I'm inspiring and helping the women across Montana. And right now we have about 400 new clients a year. Um, and so obviously our um, network is just growing and growing and growing. And what's so great about that is that so many of the people that come through these doors or are on calls with me um, that are clients throughout the state, they're so, well, um, they're so interested in helping other women entrepreneurs start their own business. And so they're willing to help mentor or just be a friend or sit down and have coffee with some of the other people that I'm working with. So I feel lucky to be a part of such an amazing network in our state. Great. Thank you, Susie. We're excited about your work, too. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'd love to invite Kim. Kim, do you want to talk a little bit about um, the new leadership project? Oh, sure. Thank you. Can you hear me all right? I can hear you, yes. Awesome. Great. Well, thank you for having me on here. It's an honor to speak with everyone who's listening as well as the other people who are on the call today. So the, um, this is called the Montana New Leadership Program. And this is a program that started about two years ago. And it's a cooperative agreement between the University of Montana's Mansfield Center and the Center for American Women in Politics at Rutgers University. And they focus on um, empowering women to be involved more civically, to be, have more leadership skills, and to consider running for office. And the reason we have this program in Montana now is because, as you heard earlier, we have, I think, 28% of women right now legislatively in our state legislature, even though we make up 52% of the population. We've only ever had one female governor, and women are really grossly underrepresented in leadership positions, not only in elected office, but also as leaders of businesses, as entrepreneurs, and I was interested in finding a program that would help remedy that. So this is a program that is part of a national network. There are about 24 such programs throughout the U.S. right now. And it's a five-day long program for up to 20 college-age women in Montana. They get training in leadership skills, on how to speak publicly, and um, even things about how to introduce people. We have a one-day trip where they get to go to Helena, meet the governor, meet other elected officials, other people in government, other people who run their own businesses, and it's a great learning experience for them. We also have a what's called a networking reception, and anyone can be involved in that reception if you'd like to be a sponsor. There are ways for everyone to do that, and I see on the um, on the slide here, there is a link to the program, and that would lead you to more information about the program, as well as who to contact. I am the political advisor. There is also a, an administrative support. It's Dina Mansour. She's our administrative uh, director. And then Sarah Rinfrey is the political director, or is the academic director. And the three of us started this program. Last summer was the first group of women who went through it, and they said it was a life-changing experience. 
when it started, I think one or two of the women said they would consider running for office. And by the end of it, nine out of the 15 said that they would. And others were interested in serving on boards and getting more involved civically. So it really increased their um, leadership and confidence, as well as expo exposed them to role models that would hopefully let them see that they can do whatever they want, that there is a group of people out there, especially women, who want to support them and that they are smart enough and strong enough to really achieve whatever they can dream about doing. There's enough support out there that they can do whatever they want. So that's why we started this program. It's been a great success. If anyone wants to learn more about it, there is a website link there. There are, you can all contact me or through the website and become a sponsor. There is another class that will be attending their, the 2018 program in June. And that is closing right about now for people who want to apply, but there, it's an annual program. So if anyone knows a college woman who would benefit from this, it's for rural and urban areas, not just Missoula. We've tried to be throughout the state, and we also try and emphasize leadership in our Native American communities. We've saved seven of the slots for people from those schools. So please, if you're interested or know someone who might be, think of this program, it's a great program for the people who participate. Wonderful. Thanks, Kim. And we'll go ahead and share emails and that more contact info at the end of the discussion as well so people can contact you. Great. Thank you. Uh, yeah. And um, Brenda, are you with us? I am. Can you hear me? Yay, I can hear you. For some reason, I couldn't hear you last time, so I'm glad you're here now. Yay. So, I am. I am. Thanks for joining. Um, so as I said before, Brenda's joining us from Great Falls and is one of the co-founders of Women Leading Montana. Do you want to share a little bit about that with us? I would be happy to. Thanks, Jan. I'm so excited to be in the company of these amazing um, women leaders in this group and have the opportunity to um, share a little bit more about Women Leading Montana. Um, we are um, very much a startup organization. Um, we have only been in place for about a year now, and it was started um, as a brainstorm um, with myself and Chantel Schieffer. Some of you may know Chantel. She is the Executive Director of Leadership Montana. And uh, through Leadership Montana, Chantel and I have become good friends, and she happened to be at my house about a year and a half ago, and I'm just spending a little time, and it was summertime, and we were sitting on the deck and sharing a lovely bottle of Prosecco, and this mm -hmm. brainchild for Leading Montana came out of that discussion. And um, we both just have such a passion to create um, felt that there was a need for an organization that was centered on women in leadership roles in Montana. Um, so we decided to start this association and invited um, 10 women from across the state um, to gather with us and kind of become that initial steering committee um, to discuss the need, to discuss our mission, principles, and how we basically launch this organization. For Chantel and I, it was kind of our thought is that we would bring in these 10 uh, business um, and um, statewide leaders across the state and, and say, okay, guys, how do, we, how do we get this out into our communities and then kind of expect everyone within that steering committee to just go out into their individual communities and start having dialogue about the need for an organization like this to really make sure before we launched anything that there was truly a need. Um, the steering committee was so enthusiastic about the concept of it that in our first meeting, all of a sudden we were planning a, you know, a big convening of um, Montana women leaders from across the state and um, what was kind of a reverse direction from what Chantal and I had originally, had originally hoped. But um, it worked out great. Um, we, we totally recognize that there are some truly wonderful leadership programs, women-centric organizations, um, professional development opportunities in our state, and our goal was um, to convene women who are currently leading in Montana to acknowledge what you know, the differences are among us and use those differences to support one another in a real way. Um, we really wanted this to be about building um, meaningful and uh, lasting relationships. We are an all-inclusive organization. We welcome women who are leading in the private sector, nonprofit sector, 
government, education, and women who are leading a household, um, and women who have retired but still have a desire to be connected and continuing, continuing their learning journey. So with the first event that we did, um, we did last October in Billings. Um, it was a two-day event. Um, we had panel discussions around finding common ground in Montana, why we love Montana. We talked about social media, the good, bad, and the ugly, um, wellness and balance in our lives, which is something that I think we all work for every single day. We had a couple of keynote speakers, and uh, Chantal and I are both certified Gracious Space facilitators, and so we had a section on Gracious Space. Um, so, and some fun stuff. We actually set aside a little room that we had a spa room. We had a couple of massage therapists that came in for an afternoon, and people could just step out of the conference for 10 minutes and get a little neck and, and hand massage, which was great. Um, we brought in um, someone early in the, the second morning to give everybody a little taste of ULA, a um, little stretching and exercise to get the day started. Um, it, was, it was our hope that we would have 50 attendees. Um, we just promoted it through our own circles of influence as well as on social media through Facebook, and we ended up having well over 100 people attend. Um, and the follow-up on the backside was um, incredibly positive, and we are now in the process of planning our next convening, which will be in Great Falls on October 15th and 16th. Um, we just had a steering committee meeting actually yesterday, and so we're still kind of working on putting together our agenda. It will be a little bit different than what we had done when we were in Billings. It's, um, we're definitely going to have uh, a leadership workshop, workshop of some nature. We will have some keynote speakers, some Montana women leaders come in to speak to the group. And then something new that we're doing this year is um, a little storytelling. We're calling it 10 plus 10, 10 topics, 10 leaders, and you can kind of pick and choose who you want to go have a conversation <laughs> with. So, um, so it's, like I say, it's still very much in its infancy. We, we rely heavily on sponsors. We want to keep the cost incredibly affordable. Um, we're only charging $150 for that two-day event, and it includes um, food and, and, and you know, participating in the entire event. Um, so we're really relying heavily on our sponsors, um, just like Montana Community Foundation, the Women's Foundation, um, to help support us so we can keep that affordable and get as many people to that table as possible. So that's Women Leading Montana. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Thanks, Brenda. It's so exciting. I love hearing about what you've done and what you're planning to do. And I really love you recognizing um, women leading homes. I think that's yes. so true and so unrecognized often, our CHOs, Chief Homemaker Officers. So thank you, right. Brenda. Right. <laughs> um, next, I'd like to talk a little bit about 100 Strong Billings. Um, this is an amazing um, philanthropic effort. Uh, Haley, do you want to share a little bit about the effort and um, how you started it? I would love to. Thank you so much. Um, I want to say, Brenda, I'm so bummed that I missed the event in Billings. It sounded like a great time. Um, it was. So, uh, 100 strong. Um, it goes back quite a few years. I own and published Yellow Snowy Woman magazine for 13 years. Um, I have just recently sold that and have moved on. But during the time that I owned the magazine, it was always important to have some kind of a philanthropic arm um, to our business. And over the years, I looked at a lot of options, um, played with quite a few different models, and nothing just seemed um, to fit. My husband came home from a business trip and told me about 100 Strong that he had seen um, somewhere on the West Coast, and it was interesting, and I liked it. Um, but again, it just didn't seem to fit with where we were in our business um, and what was what was happening in our lives. And then in 2016, I was doing some planning and realized that we were going to be celebrating our 100th issue of Yellowstone Valley Woman Magazine, and that's that was kind of the catalyst um, to really kick this off and, and get it going strong. Um, we gathered a group of like-minded women here in Billings um, with different spheres of influence. There are six of us that um, are on the vision team. And we planned for, um, it was about six months 
in the planning and organizing stages before we were able to launch 100 Strong. So in October of 2017, we had our launch kickoff, which was very exciting. Um, we were hoping to have 100 people at our kickoff, and we ended up having um, over 150. So it was, it was a great opportunity to see women really engaging here um, in Billings. The, the idea behind 100 Strong really is to make philanthropy accessible to all women of all ages and of all income levels. And I'm sure as many of you have, we sit through um, a lot of fundraisers, dinners, which are all wonderful, um, but a lot of times people are not able to contribute dollar amounts that they feel like are significant or make change. And so what we have um, developed is a program where women give $100 once a quarter and then um, quarterly we meet as an organization um, for about an hour and a half. So it's, it's a very small time commitment. They listen to presentations from three different local nonprofits. Um, and then they have an opportunity to vote and fund a project that night. It is, it is announced that night. They know exactly where their money is going and they get to watch um, significant change happen. Those projects are always focused on women and children um, in Billings. They also are capital campaigns. We want something um, that we, we call it placable, um, being able to really put our name on it and say this, this happened because of these women who have gathered, um, pooled their money, and are making a better, a better home for women and children in Billings. So we were able to, in January, give a $10 check to um, the Women's and Family Shelter here in Billings, which will go to... Um, getting their dishwasher online and running. For the last five years, they had been using paper plates in the women's and family shelter. So it, it, seems, um, it seems maybe a bit like an odd thing to fund, but the dignity it gives these people to eat off of regular paper or regular plates and silverware every day um, is, is something we can't measure. Um, we're also coming up on our next quarterly meeting in April. So we're excited to see um, who is chosen and who's voted on to receive um, our next $10,000 grant. Our hope is over time to be able to give more than $10,000, um, whether that is a larger project that we fund or um, if we give multiple um, grants every quarter. So that's in a nutshell what 100 Strong is doing. Um, we're excited, we're seeing um, a lot of great interest here in Billings, and we just hope to uh, continue to grow. Thank you, Haley. Um, when I heard about 100 Strong, of course, I was thrilled. Uh, the Women's Foundation is all about philanthropy, especially women's philanthropy, and I love your model of um, really kind of grassroots, you know, locally grown philanthropy that really benefits your local community. So thanks for being here to share about it. Thank you, and a big thank you to the Montana Community Face Foundation. Um, they're the reason that we were able to get it off the ground and running. Absolutely, and they're the reason the Women's Foundation is able to do what we do, too. We love them. Yeah. Um, so this is one of my favorite quotes um, from Elizabeth Gilbert. And I think, you know, when we thought about having this webinar about women's leadership in Montana, we were interested in not only shining a light on the amazing initiatives and getting – um, women involved in them, but also hearing from each of you who kind of help um, grown these initiatives about what your experience has been in doing so. Um, for those of us out in the world like me who are coming up with a new idea every day of some uh, social change initiative I want to start. <laughs> so, um, so one of the questions I have, and um, I think, Kim, maybe I'll start with you. Um, what did you find were some of the challenges that you had to overcome when you thought about bringing new leadership to Montana, and how did you overcome those? Thank you for the question. You know, as with everything, there's always challenges. One of the challenges we faced for this program is funding, because although it's in cooperation with the university, we have to do all of the fundraising for the program, and I'm the one in charge of that. So we had to work at a budget, and we're looking at a, um, about $40,000 every year. And so it just started being outreach to people who were interested in the program. 
who I knew through my service in the legislature and also just who I knew in the community. So I just started meeting with people and raising money. Everyone is really excited about this program and really thinks that we need it. So that was how we overcame that. One of the other things that um, we don't always talk about a lot with women's and with any really program is that sometimes people get very territorial and um, or they feel as though they've been left out. So that's always something else that we um, had, to, had to deal with in some ways and we had to make sure that we included everyone who might be interested in it uh, because really the more people included makes the program better. And it's just something just to keep in mind when you're doing things like this is even though you may not mean to, sometimes you leave people out who in retrospect should have been included. So it's always just a really thorough process that we try to go through to include everyone who we think should be included and then to make it as wide a net as possible because the more inclusive it is, the better. Absolutely. Yeah, the funding is always tough. Thank you, Kim. Um, Brenda, what do you think? What have been some of the challenges that you all have uh, sort of met and overcome in uh, launching Women Leading Montana? You know, this is such an interesting question, and when I was pondering it this morning, um, you know, I, I think I'm going to echo, you know, what's already been said about funding is always kind of any, any challenge. You know, when I think about starting an organization from scratch for, for me and Chantel, you know, we each threw a few hundred dollars in a checking account and said, okay, let's try to make this fly. And um, we were really very fortunate that we were able to reach out to some folks um, that were more than willing to step up and write us some initial checks to get the thing off the ground. Um, so, so that was help, you know, very, very helpful. And for me, as um, someone in the private sector, uh, you know, always wanting to make sure budgets are balanced and that um, we have the proper funding to do what we need to do. It was, a, it was kind of a scary thing to step out and do this, um, and knowing that we were having the interest that we were having and wanting to keep the cost at a low, you know, at such a low price point of making sure that we were going to be able to cover all those costs and still offer an experience that was um, that was powerful. And uh, in the end, it all worked out, but there were, there were a few sleepless nights over wanting to make sure that we um, were funded appropriately. And I think as we continue moving forward, that is going to be an ongoing challenge, as all of us here on this call recognize that um, there are more and more um, um, there, there are more and more asks for um, funding, whether it's through grants or, um, or um, people just being philanthropic. And um, so I, I think it's just going to be more and more difficult over time to continue to um, gain funding. However, um, I am married to a, uh, a, a fundraiser, and what he's telling me is that um, women are really stepping forward, and it speaks to what you were talking about, Jen, too, really stepping forward and um, in their lifetime are giving more from um, their heart and what they're passionate about than what um, might be good just from a tax advantage standpoint. And to me, there's, um, you know, there, there's such, that, that's such, a, such a, a, a powerful thing in thinking about, you know, the reasons that women give and that they want things to succeed. So hopefully that helps women leading Montana move forward. I think also for us, um, one of our, our continued challenges will just be as we continue to create awareness of the organization just because we are such a startup still at this point and um, making sure that we're doing everything that we can to get the word out and let people know that it is available and it is all inclusive and um, that we want as many people from around the state that have an interest in this to participate. So, Wonderful. Yeah, so some themes there. Um, I'm glad you mentioned women's philanthropy um, because, of course, it is one of our great areas of interest. And actually, um, just a couple years ago, we reached a milestone in which um, women actually hold more wealth than men for the first time in history. Um, and you know, are, so there are, are far more women in a place to be more philanthropic now. And you're right that they're much more likely um, to kind of give following their heart. So that's exciting for those of us who are doing work that appeals to women. Thanks, Brenda. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Susie, tell us a little bit about some of the challenges you've had um, at the Women's Business Network and, and how you've overcome them. 
Sure, of course. Um, I would say our number one challenge is trying to be everywhere. Um, you know, we have such an amazing um, growth and entrepreneurship in our state. So our phones kind of ring off the hook, especially the first quarter. It's a lot of people's New Year's resolution to, to fulfill that dream and your own business. And so um, we are very busy over here. And so fulfilling the demand for the state is kind of our um, pressure point right now where we're just really trying to expand. Um, we're hoping to open up another sub-center. We're looking for funding for that um, in the state so that we can continue to keep up with the demand of the state. Um, and so it's really just about, um, you know, trying to get the word out there. We are a statewide organization. We are partially funded by the Small Business Administration, but it's a small amount. And so the rest of it is us getting out there and um, educating women and letting them know about the resources available at the Montana Women's Business Center. Um, but what has been great, though, is um, because I've just been focusing on a lot of my trainings here in Bozeman, um, because, uh, again, we want to have more funding to have them in other places, too. So a lot of our trainings are in Bozeman and in Hamilton, but we do have people coming from all around the state for our trainings, and so that has been really exciting. This last week I had um, somebody from Roundup drive over, someone from Billings, someone from Missoula, and someone from Helena at one of our trainings. So that was really exciting to see that the, the word is spreading about our trainings, and it's worth the drive. It's worth people just getting in the car and coming on over. Um, we're trying to take a couple of our classes on the road, and so um, this next this month we're going to be in Livingston for one of our classes. Uh, we're doing one in Big Sky. We've got another one, um, uh, another one over in Belgrade. So we're trying to get out there slowly um, with the staffing that we have right now. Nice. Yes, geography is always a fun challenge for all of us in Montana, for sure. But hopefully, um, being on this call will help get the word out as well. Yeah. Um, Haley, tell us um, about 100 Strong and, and that effort and what some of your challenges were. I think um, one of our biggest challenges, much like um, the other women have echoed, was from a fiscal perspective. Part of the reason being is we really do not want to have staff or overhead with 100 strong. The idea it is, is that it is a pass-through mechanism. Um, and so we struggled to find how that was going to work. Um, everyone who participates um, and, and sits on the vision team for 100 strong is a volunteer. And um, 501c3s are a complicated complicated mess and something we really didn't want to get into. And so working with the Montana Community Foundation, ultimately, they were um, a lifesaver for us. We had another source lined up that kind of fell apart three weeks before our launch. Um, they stepped in and, and really have supported us and made this happen. Our goal is, is never to um, build an organization around 100 Strong. Our goal really is to make it a pass-through source uh, for women to give and for philanthropy and billings. Wonderful. Yeah, the devil's often in the details for sure, just figuring those out. Um, so you've heard a little bit about some of the challenges these women overcame. Um, I wanted to just kind of delve a little bit deeper into the idea of women's leadership and participation and um, why it's important. Of course, we at the Women's Foundation think it's vital. It's part of our mission. Um, but I'd love to hear more from each of our speakers about that. Um, Kim, do you want to share a little bit about your thoughts about women's leadership, um, either in general or just also with your um, new program? Sure, I would be happy to. So in general, I really think women's leadership is important just from what I've seen because women have a tendency to be more collaborative and values and than trying to focus on what differentiates us and how we're different. So that's why I think in general women's leadership is so important. And as that relates to our program, it is a nonpartisan program, and we have uh, political leaders, both Democrats and Republicans. Geraldine Custer is a Republican who's involved with the program. And it's really important in my mind that we just have leadership opportunities for women in college to see that they can be leaders. Studies have shown that when girls are growing up, they think they can do anything the boys can. And that really continues much through high school. But for whatever reason, I'm sure we can all think of lots of them, 
once they start college in that first year, it suddenly drops off and they don't see themselves being equal as the, and having the same opportunities as males. So the network and the support that this program provides and how it really shows that they can be anything they want, I think is vital to having women fully participate in our society and really be representative of the communities that they live in. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that um, that idea of really um, shining a light on women who are already serving in leadership and um, sort of offering role models is a really important one. And I appreciate um, the work that you all are doing with young women especially. Brenda, what are your thoughts about um, sort of the importance of growing women's leadership? Sure. You know, for me, my entire life, continued personal and professional growth has just always been an, an important part of my life. <clears throat> you know, um, when I was a young woman, I struggled a little bit with confidence. Um, that I remember um, often, you know, early on in my marriage to my husband, asking if he would help me make an appointment to take my car in, stuff like that, that I just wasn't always confident doing. And um, now I look at um, the young women that are in my life, um, that are in my business, and, and sometimes I still see some of those thing, same things that are just kind of holding them back, not feeling comfortable that they can stand side by side or toe to toe with anybody. And, um, you know, for me, my husband was a huge supporter in helping me build confidence and strength and, um, you know, helping me along in my career path. And um, I think that there is a need for that kind of support. Um, women aren't always the best supporters of each other. And uh, often we find ways to, to tear each other down, which to me is just a, kind of a horrifying concept. Um, so we need to call attention to those actions and recognize the value of holding each other up um, and celebrating each other and offering a helping hand and just being there for each other. So um, I think for Women Leading Montana, a huge part of our, our goal and mission is um, offering um, the opportunity to be around others that are supportive um, and recognize that, that value of, of connection and celebration. So um, bring on the confidence. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I love their story about your husband as well. I think sometimes um, our families are overlooked when we're sort of recognizing and celebrating our mentors and supporters, um, but it's such a huge part of who we are and how we become the leaders that we become in our lives. Right. Um, Susie, what are your thoughts about sort of especially women's participation in business and why that's important? Oh, um, I just think that when women come together, um, amazing things happen. I just see it so many times that, like I said, when I've got clients that are coming through the door and they're looking for advice or they need help with something, but they may be really great in other um, and I refer my clients to go and sit down with that other person. People are always willing, or other women are always willing to help. Um, so I find that women are just so important to have in leadership roles because they're so willing to help. That's what we do. And, um, and so I just think amazing things happen. And, and it, um, again, we're just lucky to be a part of the, the link in Montana, just um, connecting women to each other. Nice. So true. Haley, what are your thoughts? Anything you'd like to add about um, the importance of uh, sort of including women? You know, I've been fortunate for so many years to um, publish and celebrate strong women. Um, and I've learned so much about all the different types of leaders that it takes to make our community go round. We need the quiet ones. We need the unsung um, leaders and heroes. And so for me, really looking um, beyond the surface and looking deeper at Leadership, um, it starts in homes, um, just like you said. Um, mothers are, are hugely important in developing that in their not only daughters but also sons um, and in their sons' understanding and also um, building up women around them. So for me, women in leadership, um, it isn't always the, the flashy things on the outside that we see. I, I would like to invest and encourage those women who are behind the scenes um, quietly being leaders that may not get recognition, and they're they're critical to 
uh, the future of Montana and the future of our country. Absolutely. Yeah, I sort of think of um, women in Montana as like a huge treasure trove, and I'm always trying to figure out how we can tap into it more fully. Um, so, Haley, since you were just talking some about women out there um, who might be considering leadership, what what are some, like if you were going to offer a woman who was considering um, some kind of a leadership position, uh, some words of wisdom, what would you what would you want to tell her? I think having um, a strong role model is is hugely important. I know over um, the years I've had many different women who have spoken into my life in different ways and at different times, but I think it's critical for each of us to have that person or those couple of people that we can bounce ideas off of, that we can go to, and that they're honest with us, fully honest, um, and not just tell us what we want to hear. So I think having a mentor is, is critical um, to stepping out in a leadership role. And then also, um, just do it. I mean, it, it's, it's something we can always find an excuse not to do. And a lot of times we don't get anywhere unless we just take that leap. Wonderful. I love it. Brenda, what do you think? Do you have words of wisdom for women out there who might be thinking about joining one of these initiatives or um, some kind of leadership role in their community? Sure, I'm going to tag on with what Haley just just shared. Um, I, you know, as I, someone told me many many years ago when I first started my professional career, if it scares the hell out of you, it's probably worth doing. And um, I I have thought of that so many times in my um, pro professional career path and and with various organizations I've worked with and and you know, Women Leading Montana was definitely one of those at a very at the very beginning probably scared the hell out of me just a little bit, um, but in the end it was incredibly worth doing. So um, I, I think that, you know, if we don't try, we don't know. And it's not that there shouldn't be a lot of thought put into any um, career path or building a, a business or a program. You know, it, it needs to be thoughtful in how we move forward with it. But um, if we don't try, we don't know, and that it's okay if it's not perfect. It's okay if maybe we fail in that effort, um, as long as we just continue to to um, pull up, you know, pull up our boots and 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 continue to try. So, and I guess the last thing I would just share for me that's been a huge part of my my life in general is just make sure that whatever whatever you do, make sure it just brings you joy. Um, life is just too short not to not to be enjoying it along the way. Mm, love that. So many words of wisdom. That's great. Um, Kim, what do you think? What would you like to sort of share with women out there who might be considering leadership? You know, I really think that it's important for women to really think that they can have it all. I, I've been to talks when people have said, you know, you may think you can have it all, but you're going to have to make choices. And I think that that's really not true. I think you can have it all, but you're going to have to prioritize in your life what you are willing to do with your time and what you are willing to say no to. So I think if somebody's considering leadership and if it's, it's going to be taxing on their time, they can do it. They can do whatever they want. And there's people who are going to support them, but they're just going to have to just decide how to prioritize and to say no to some things. And it's okay to say no because as long as they're happy with what they're doing and at the end of the day they feel like they've done a good job, then there's nothing they can't do. So I just want women just to know that they, that they are enough and that they have the ability to be leaders and that they should just step up that there are people who are going to support them that they will be surprised about. Mm -hmm. Yes, and this is coming from someone who knows, being a mom and an attorney and a legislator. <laughs> Um, Susie, what do you think? Do you have some uh, thoughts or, or words you want to share with women about leadership and, and um, wisdom for them? Ooh, I just say always find a mentor. You know, <laughs> I always say find a mentor and then just ask. Just get involved. Just do it. Um, no one cares as much about you as you do. So, so just get out there and do it. Awesome. So um, this is the point in the hour when we like to open up the phone line. For those of you who are out there, if you may have uh, a question that you would like to um, ask of our presenters, I do just want to say before I unmute all of you, 
Um, if you do have background noise, please mute your own phone. Mute your individual phone so when we do this, we don't get a bunch of noise. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. The conference has been unmuted. The conference has been unmuted. Okay. So are there, are there folks out there who have questions that they'd like to direct to any of our presenters today? My name is Amanda, and I live in Helena, and I was hoping you could, I would love to get involved in the Women Leading Montana, and um, I didn't catch the time and date of the next event, but if there are any other ways that I could get involved, I'd love to know. Sure, thank you. Um, <clears throat> our next convening will be in Great Falls. Our next Great Falls. It's October 15th and 16th. And it will be held at the Civic Center, the Missouri River Room. Um, there, you know, at this point, the steering committee is um, pretty much putting everything together um, as far as just kind of the, the big picture, what the agenda is going to be. Um, however, as we get closer, um, we certainly could use some hands in helping put the thing together. So I think Jen was sharing. Um, my email address? It, yes, I just posted. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So please feel free to reach out to me, and um, I'd be happy to let you know when, if there might be an opportunity if you're interested in volunteering. Um, you can also follow us on Facebook. That's our primary uh, form of communication to the outside world right now. Um, so please like us on Facebook, and, and there will be lots of updates along the way as to um, the content of the agenda and as we, as we get closer. So thank you for asking. Great, thank you. Other questions for our presenters? I think if nobody has one offhand, I wanted to invite the other participants to share a little bit about how folks could get involved in their programs as well. I did just post a slide that has your email addresses, um, but if there's any other information you want to share with the group about how they can get involved or upcoming events or whatever, that would be fine. Susie, do you want to share anything about getting involved in the Women's Business Center? Of course. Um, so the Montana Women's Business Center, um, one way to get involved is to support the organization. <laughs> Thursday, September 13th, here in Bozeman at the New Rialto, which is right downtown Bozeman, if you've been there. Super fun fundraiser, um, always a blast. The, M the MCs and the auctioneers are hilarious. Um, so it's a great way to support the organization if you believe in um, supporting women entrepreneurship. Um, another great way to get involved is to tell people about um, our Power Up classes. Again, that's that class that we have put together. Um, it's a three-week class where people learn how to start and grow a business. Um, it's insane the the feedback we're getting. It's just so great. Um, we have so many really businesses come out of that class, and and we've got people traveling from all around the state to come to it. So it's three three hours every week. Um, right now we're doing them kind of in here in the southwest Montana, but that's a great way to get involved. And then also we have a Women's Business Center advisory board. And so if that's something that you're interested in getting involved in, um, my email is um, looks like it's getting passed around, and I'm. I'm happy to chat with you to see if that might be a good fit as well. Awesome. Thanks, Susie. Um, Kim, what do you think? Do you have anything you'd like to share about getting involved in the new leadership project? You bet. Thank you. So for this project, we are constantly looking to give the women who are participating connections in their communities. So one of the ways we're doing this is through the networking reception that we have for them during the program. And we invite all of the sponsors of the program to attend the networking reception. And it's a really great opportunity to meet with the next generation of women leaders in Montana. They're really an extraordinary group of women. So the, the program this year runs the first week of June, the 4th through the 8th. And we will have the reception um, probably the 5th or the 7th. I'm not certain which date yet. 
And I would just invite everyone to go to the uh, either email me at the email address shown there if you're interested in being a sponsor, or you could go to the website at the um, umt.edu slash mansfield slash academic slash new leadership and learn more about the program and find out a way to be involved so that you can connect with the next generation of leaders in our state. It's really a great program. Thanks. And I know that um, you already have your group that you're considering for this year, but um, if women out there know young women who are going to be in colleges and universities in the state who they want um, to invite to participate for next year, um, then maybe they could email you that name. Uh, would that work, Kim? That would be great because, yes, yeah. it is an annual program. So, you know, we're always looking to fill the group up and um, any, any contacts we have would be wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. Okay, Haley, what do you think? Do you want to share more about how uh, some of our participants could get involved in 100 Strong? Absolutely. Um, we have our website is 100strongbillings.com. Um, all the information is listed there to sign up and join. It's, it's easy to do. We do it all online. Um, and then they receive information regarding the quarterly meetings um, to stay involved from that perspective. Um, one other thing I, I want to just say real quick is um, we've been talking about these women leaders. Um, I made a, when I sold the business and made a major change, I jumped into the very male dominated world of commercial real estate. And um, so I would love to connect with some of you women on that vein, I think that as women, we understand and work um, work differently and think differently. And I'm hoping that um, I can walk alongside some of these young women and help them with that part of um, entrepreneurship. I love that. Thank you, Haley. I think it's so important. Um, and uh, mentorship is, of course, an important part of what we want to promote both through Powerhouse and the Women's Foundation, too. So I hope someone contacts you. Um, well, thank you all to our presenters and to all of you who have joined us on the phone. Um, we're just about finished, but I wanted to just share a couple upcoming fun opportunities with you from the Women's Foundation and Powerhouse Montana. Maggie, do you want to share a little bit about what we've got? Yeah, let me take it away, guys. So in March, we have eight events for Powerhouse Montana happening across the state, so that's a big deal. And those eight include Big Sky, Billings, Bozeman, Eureka, Flathead, um, which is in Kalispell, Helena, Highline, which is Haver, and Wolf Point. So if you're anywhere near any of those communities or, hey, you're in a different community, feel free to show up. Our topic is uh, women's leadership and legacy, similarly to today. Um, but each individual group has their own kind of flair to add, and it's a really good opportunity to meet mentors, to add resources, to grow your network. Ultimately, I hope that you guys can all attend or check those out. Those will be happening monthly, and we'll keep them updated under our Facebook Powerhouse and Women's Foundation Facebook pages under the Events tab. Um, I also wanted to say briefly, for April, we should be releasing more information about this soon, but April 10th is Equal Pay Day for All Women, and we're really excited to be sponsoring Cheers for Change um, in seven locations around Montana, uh, Billings, Bozeman, Kalispell, Livingston, Missoula, and Butte. Um, so we're hoping that maybe April you'll be able to come for that too, where we celebrate women catching up to a uh, man's dollar, and we're just really promoting equity here and hoping that everybody can participate. So there'll be no, more news on that. Follow us on Facebook, social media, best way to keep updated on our events, guys. Thank you for joining. Thanks, Maggie. So thank you, Brenda, Susie, Kim, and Haley for joining us today. And thanks for all of you who joined us on the phone as well. We're really um, happy to celebrate women's leadership in Montana and offer you connections to what's going on in growing leadership opportunities across the state. And um, we hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day and a lovely beginning to spring. Yes, happy Women's History Month, everybody. <laughs> okay. Yay. Thanks. Bye-bye, right. everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.